Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Destiny Church Online Worship Experience. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. I'm all in. How about you? Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome. Hallelujah. Listen, go call somebody, text somebody, holler in the other room, let them know we're worshiping here at Destiny Church. Good morning. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers and father figures. Yes, yes. Glory, glory. Good morning, good morning, welcome. We see you, Facebook. We see you, YouTube. Freeconference.com, good morning. Yes, yes. this morning. I'm all in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, good morning and God bless you. Welcome to Destiny Church Online Worship Experience. I am so excited and blessed to be here with you today. If you don't know, my name is Gary Walsh Jr. and I'm honored and blessed to be the pastor and servant leader here at Destiny Church. And we're just honored that the Lord would allow each of us to gather together to worship him in spirit and in truth. And if this is your first time worshiping with us, good morning and God bless you. Welcome. You are our special guest. If this is your thousandth or fifth or tenth time worshiping with us, we praise God for you as well. We are just so thankful for allowing God, for, for God allowing us, excuse me, to have and see and be blessed with another day. And we want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers and father figures out there worshiping with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. So listen, uh, to start off our, our service, I want to do what we, we generally do and read a passage of scripture and then we'll get right into prayer. And so today I want to read from Psalm 67. The 67th Psalm is where we'll be shining um, our morning spotlight, uh, scripture spotlight on this morning. Psalm 67, reading from the New International Version. And this is what it says. It says, may God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth your salvation among all nations may the people praise you god may all the people praise you may the nations be glad and sing for joy for you rule the people with equity and guide the nations of the earth may the people praise you god may all the people praise you 
The land yields its harvest, God. God, our own God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy and righteous word. I have read for you Psalm 67 in its entirety. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father and our God, how we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good and gracious to us to allow us to see it. Father, we recognize you didn't have to do it, but you did. You woke us up this morning. God is going on our way. And for that, we want to tell you thank you. Lord, we pray that you would look inside of our hearts. If there's anything in there that's not like you, please remove it. Please make us better, brighter, bolder, all for your glory, O oh God. Simply put, we're asking you, Lord, to forgive us of our sins, wipe our slates clean, Thank you for giving us another chance. Father, I pray that you would bless each and every individual under the sound of my voice, whether they live near or far. God, they're always close to you because you care about us, God. And so, Father, we're just reaching out to you right now to bless us through this worship experience, Lord. We're praying, God, that you would just have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts, oh God. Have your way right now in this service, God, without our permission, Father, we want to have so much of you today, God, that by the end of this service, we know for sure that we had an experience with you and you alone, God. There's somebody here under the sound of my voice, Lord, that needs an extra special blessing, Father, that we know you can make it happen today, Father, through this worship experience, God. And we're praying, Lord, that you would just do what you do best, and that's blessed, Father. We're also praying, Lord, that you please bless today's offering. May be used for the upkeep of your kingdom here on earth. Please bless the gift and the giver, O oh God. And Father, please also expand our territory, so much so that our cups runneth over and we can be a blessing to somebody else. Father, we want to tell you, Thank you in advance for victory. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Together in love, we say amen, amen, and praise God. Praise God. Well, welcome and God bless you. Good morning to each and every one of you joining in with us today here at Destiny Church. We are just honored and blessed that the Lord has led you this way to worship with us and as we worship him in spirit and in truth. And so uh, whether you're joining with us from Facebook, YouTube, church online, or freeconferencecall.com, we just praise God for you and the opportunity to join you wherever you are, uh, whether you're in your home, your car, wherever you are right now, we just praise God that we're able to worship with you today. And listen, if this is your first time worshiping with, with us and you'd like to get some more information about our church, about our ministry, about uh, our church family or my family or myself, you can go to our website, which is www.destinychurchmd.org. That's destinychurchmd, as in Maryland, .org. There you can find out more information about our church and what we've got going on. We are still worshiping virtually, still worshiping online, but we praise God for each and every one of you. And uh, we, in the coming months, we are still praying and, and, and being led by the Lord in, in regards to uh, getting back in the sanctuary. But until then, we want you to join us right here uh, each and every Sunday morning that the Lord allows. And even when we do get back in the sanctuary, it is our goal to still have a very strong and growing online presence. So listen, join us and get more information at our website at destinychurchmd.org. Also, you can get, uh, if you want to send in your prayer requests and your praise reports, you can do so. We are praying church. We love to pray and we want to pray with you and for you. You can send your prayer requests and your praise reports to prayerbuilds at gmail.com. That's our email address, prayerbuilds at gmail.com. That's prayerbuilds, B-U-I-L-D-S, at gmail.com. There you can send in your prayer request and your praise reports. Oh, excuse me, got to adjust my chair. Praise reports and, and uh, prayer requests. Uh, to prayerbuilds at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. And listen, if you need counseling or mentorship or just want to reach out to me as, as a pastor, uh, please do so at prayerbuilds at gmail.com. And we'll do our very best to get right back to you as soon as possible. Uh, also, if you want to stay in the loop about what's going on um, here at Destiny Church, we still have things going on, even though 
uh, we are online. We still are striving to, to keep our ministry thriving and going and being a blessing to the community, both near and far. And so if you want to stay connected with us, you can text the word LOOP, L-O-O-P, to 240-377-0811. That's 240-377-0811. That's just text the word LOOP to that phone number and that'll connect you uh, to our text message and email service. We send out messages from time to time, uh, calendar events, things like that, reminders. But we also send out inspiration and motivational messages from time to time because we wanna be a blessing on a regular basis. And so we don't try to inundate you or, or over uh, populate your, your smart devices or anything like that, but we do stay connected. How about that? So text the word loop to 240-377-0811. And um, so, yes, yeah, so look out for, for in the coming weeks or coming days even uh, for some text messages or emails from us in regards to some upcoming dates. We have uh, our church anniversary coming up in, in, a, in a couple of months. We have past, past, uh, pastoral family anniversary day coming up in a couple of months. And we just praise God for all that he's done uh, and is doing in the ministry and the life here of Destiny Church. And we want you to be a part of it and stay connected. Amen. And listen. Also want to thank each and every one of you uh, who are being obedient to the Lord in regards to tithes and offerings and contributions. Uh, you are a vital part of this ministry and, and helping us to grow and to move forward and to still do uh, ministry on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, even though we are not in the sanctuary, even though we're not in the, in the church physically, we are still doing month, uh, ministry on a regular basis. And so like this past... Um, Christmas and holiday season, we were able to bless uh, tons of families, a lot of families, uh, because of your uh, obedience to the Lord in regards to tithes and offerings. And so we want to thank you for that. And if the Lord places it on your heart to be a blessing to the ministry through tithes and offerings or donations, you can do so two ways. The first way is you can go to the Givelify app. You download it from the smart from uh, on your smart device from the app store or you can go to our website click on online donations it'll take you directly to the givelify app and there you can uh, give however the lord is leading you to give i gotta share this that uh, however uh, you decide to give uh, in donations and tithes and offerings is really between you and the Lord. There is no obligation. The only obligation is whatever the Lord places on your heart. And so we are appreciative and we thank God for each and every one of you uh, for what you do in regards to tithes and offerings. And so you can give through the Givelify app or also you can give through Cash App. We also, the church now has a Cash App account and our cash tag is dollar sign Destiny Church Waldorf, all one word, dollar sign Destiny Church Waldorf. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver and we praise God for each and every one of you. And so we wanna encourage you to continue to be obedient to the Lord in regards to tithes and offerings through Cash App or Givelify. We praise God for you. Um, I think that's it as far as pastoral points and announcements. Um, I want to say again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers and uh, father figures. We praise God for each and every one of you, and we just pray that you have an amazing day in the Lord. So listen, this is what I want to do. Uh, I, want to I want to play an another selection, and then we're going to get right into the Word of God. So listen, go call somebody, text somebody, holler in the other room, send them an instant message, whatever you got to do. Tell them we're on Facebook, YouTube, freeconferencecall.com, church online. So listen, come join us as we get into the Word of God after this next selection. Amen. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. And praise God. Praise God. Well, listen, good morning again to each and every one of you who are just now joining in with us uh, here at Destiny Church Online Worship Experience. We praise God for each and every one of you joining with us today, either whether you're from Facebook, on YouTube, freeconferencecall.com, or church online. We praise God for you and the opportunity to worship God with you. Uh, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers and father figures. We're getting ready to get into the Word of God right now, so I want to ask if you would grab your Bibles or your electronic device or whatever it is you have and turn with me to the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Amen. Amen. Isaiah, the sixth chapter. And listen, if you're struggling to find Isaiah 6, listen, in every Bible, if you're using the, your book, in every Bible is a free gift called the Table of Contents. All you've got to do is turn to the front of the book. It's right there, the, the free gift, the Table of Contents. Look for Isaiah, which is in the Old Testament. It'll tell you what page to turn to, to the beginning of Isaiah, and then you go find chapter 6. Chapter 6 of Isaiah, and we'll be looking at uh, today Isaiah, the 6th chapter, verses 1 through... 1 through 8. Amen. 1 one through 8 is where we'll be shining our sermonic spotlight on today. Praise God. Again, good morning to those of you just joining in with us. We praise God with you. We see you out there. Amen. Amen. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 8. I'll be reading from the New International Version today. The New International Version is where uh, I'll be reading from. And... If you've got it, if you found Isaiah the sixth chapter, <clears throat> Isaiah the sixth chapter, verses one through eight, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to yell out in a loud voice and type in your chat room, I've got it. Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. I think I've heard some of y'all shouting way out here. I've got it, I've got it. Listen, somebody is wondering what it is that you have. You need to let them know you've got the word of God and they need to get it for themselves. Amen. Amen. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through eight. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. And this is what it says. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. With two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I have lived among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty." Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the application of his holy and righteous word. Now, I just want to put a title to this text and talk about it for the short time that is ours. See better, be better. See better, be better. Amen. Amen. See better, be better. I need your prayers this morning. Your prayers this morning. Isaiah 6, verses 1 through 8. See better, be better. This past week, uh, I was introduced to a quote by an actress by the name of Elizabeth Marble that says, if you can see it, you can be it, and I believe it. 
And as I replayed that quote over and over in my mind, I began to realize how true that quote is or can be for many of us. Because the truth, of, the truth is, for those of us who, who desire to be or have, have or do better in life, loves, or labors that our Heavenly Father has allowed us to be a part of, one of the things that we have to remember is that one of the greatest deterrents from our joy, peace, and blessings is ourselves and our perspectives. Let me see if I can't break that down again. I believe that one of the greatest deterrents from our joy, our peace, and our even our blessings is ourselves and our perspectives. You see, chances are, if you look at life with the constant attitude of the glass half empty, you would develop a greater sense of, I can't do it, or that's not for me. But the person who is more intentional about seeing life as a glass as a glass half full has a better chance of directing their actions, attitudes, associations on the side of growing or becoming better or more blessed. Now, maybe you miss what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is that if you are a person who looks for or, or at the negatives first or more often, then chances are you're going to develop more negatives than positives in your life situation. But if you are a person who works to find the positives in various situations, then you are more likely to build on those positive perspectives. Because the truth is, we all have, have the same 24 hours within a day to make things move as God intended for us. But if we can't first see it in our hearts and our minds, then chances are we won't be willing to do what it takes to make it happen for ourselves. And on this Father's Day, I'm not just talking to fathers today. I'm not just talking to men. Ladies, don't tune me out because some of the greatest messages we ever get to come from y'all. So listen, ladies, I need you to stay tuned in and help us all get where God wants us to go. See, because uh, on this Father's Day, I need to ask you, what what do you see when you look at yourself or your life situation? So that's for everybody. I said it's not just for the fathers, not just for the men. That's for everybody. I need to ask you, what do you see when you look at yourself or your life situations? And don't act like you don't do it. Don't act like you don't look in the mirror. Don't act like you don't look at what's going on in your life, loves, and labors. Don't act like you, you're not uh, fully engaged about what's going on. Do you see what God sees in you and for you, or do you often see more of your flaws and your faults. And listen, I'm not getting trying to get on of anybody. I believe we all do that from one time or another. We all look at or look for our flaws and our faults. <clears throat> But I believe that honestly, many of us from time to time can use some refocusing of what we see when we look at ourselves. And just so I don't confuse anyone, anyone under the sound of my voice, when I talk about seeing yourself, I'm not really talking about what you see on the outside, but more of what you see on the inside. I recently, I, I recently went for my annual eye exam, and prior to the exam, they had to take me out they had me take out my contact lenses. <laughs> but then the assistant told me that I could go back in the other room and have a seat. <laughs> but what she failed to realize is that the whole reason I was there in the first place was to get my sight checked. And when she had me remove my contact lenses, I could no longer see clearly nor make my way back to my seat without staying close to the wall and walking slowly. Yes, I'm admitting my eyesight is pretty bad. She took for granted that my sight was was only slightly off and it's not, and that I could see decently without my contacts, and I can't, but I tried to play it off the best I could, which is exactly what a lot of us try to do in our lives today. Play it off as if things are good when we're proper and, 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 when, when, and we are properly progressing, but the truth is because of limited foresight or insight, come on somebody, of our true selves, many of us are struggling way more than we have to in order to move forward or higher as God prepared for us. I'm going to preach this thing whether I, somebody likes it or not. So the question, watch this. So the question I really want to throw out to each of us today is, do you desire or want better and bless more consistently in your life, loves, and labors? Is there anybody under the sound of my voice who wants exactly what God wants for you? Is there anybody who wants to be more on the proper path to, to and be more prepared to, to handle the plan that God has for you? Well, if you answered yes, then one of the things we're going to have to do is 
least be more honest with ourselves, learn to shift more of our perspectives, and understand that when we can see better, we can be better. Come on, somebody. When we can see better, say it with me. I want to see better so I can be better. I want to see what God wants me to see. I want to be more of who God has created me to be. I want to be blessed more consistently no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I'm feeling on the inside, no matter what they throw at me on the outside, I want to see better so I can be better. Come on, somebody. See, because when we can see better, we can love better. When we can see better, we can live better. When we can see better, we can labor better. Some of us are missing out on so many blessings because our sight, or better yet, our insights is blurred at all. I was telling y'all about how I went to the eye doctor for an eye exam, and actually, I'm supposed to go for an update exam every year. We all are, actually. And, and to check to see if my eyesight has gotten any better, or worse, or is the same. And thankfully, come on, somebody, get with me. And thankfully, this time, my sight hadn't changed too much from the last exam, but I still needed a, a bit of a prescription adjustment, excuse me. <laughs> and can I tell somebody that just a little adjustment made a world of difference? And I don't know how off your spiritual, I don't know how off your spiritual sight or inside of yourself is, but I can bet that we all need some adjustment because we all have sin. <laughs> don't look at me funny. Don't look at me strange. Don't shut me out right now because the Bible says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that falling short part right there means that we have made, we have made missteps for the path that God has intended for us. In other words, we all need some sight adjustments so we can get back on the proper path path that God has intended for us in his plan. But I'm not trying to lay any heavy guilt on anybody. What I'm trying to do is help us to get back to God's glory. So if we can adjust our sight and our focus, we can have greater potential to get back on track. Is there anybody here and you want not just to get back on track, but to stay on track more often and be able to help others get there for themselves too? Well, my friends, you're in the right place at the right moment. God has designed this moment just here right for you. So listen, if you want to get back on track, listen, uh, you, you're, you're, and you're here today and you're listening, that, that you got to understand that there's a few things that today's text is tailored to teach us in order to help us see better to be better. And the first thing, here we are, we're going to jump right in the, in the points. I'm not going to hold you long. And the first thing we've got to, to do to see better in order to be better is we've got to see God's glory. Now, I don't know what you look at when you're going through things. I don't know what you're looking for when you're dealing with stuff. Come on, somebody. But if you want to see better, to be better, we've got to see, first of all, God's glory. And I'm going to tag on to that no matter what. you got to see God's glory no matter what. It's right here in verse verses 1 through 4 of, of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. And here's what it says. Can I read it to you? Here it goes. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. I'm going to stop right there. You see, listen, you see, listen, uh, 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 it, it's, uh, we have to understand the Bible shared with us that King Uzzai, it says right there when the year the King Uzzai died, King Uzzai was a beloved king of, of by Isaiah and the people of Judah. Because although he wasn't perfect, none of us are, come on somebody, he worked hard to bring the people back towards God. So when he died, everyone was devastated and they were in a deep period of mourning. Go on and read the first five chapters of of uh, of Isaiah to get some some context and some and some more information. So when he died, everybody was devastated and they were deep in the period of mourning. But even through tragedy and terrible circumstances, Isaiah could still see the glory of God at work. And what that says to you and I is is that no matter what we what may be going on in or outside of our lives, uh, we should never lose sight of the glory of God. God is good. Oh, 
all the time. And all the time, God is good. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter how you're feeling, God is good. Somebody say God is good. And if you understand how good God is all the time, that means that no matter what you are dealing with, no matter how you feel, no matter what you're going through, you serve a still serve a good God. And we need to see his glory. And that's exactly what Isaiah was trying to help us to see right here. First of all, is to see God's glory. Because what Isaiah was seeing was that even in the midst of sorrow, he could still still see, first of all, God's majesty. Because it says it right there in the text, he was high and exalted. But not only could Isaiah still see God's majesty, he could still see God's authority. Because the Bible says he, was, he saw him seated on a throne. And the seraphim were doing that thing by singing praises unto God. And all this while going through some things of his own. You see, Isaiah was in the midst of mourning, but he shared with us in this book, in the sixth chapter here, that he could, he saw the glory of the Lord, even in the midst, come on somebody, of a bad year, even in the midst uh, of a pandemic, even in the midst uh, of, of jobs, job losses, even in the, uh, the, the midst uh, of more month than money, even in the midst uh, of some heartbreak, uh, heartbreak. Isaiah says, even when the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. I saw the glory of the Lord. And I got to help somebody to understand uh, that, that what I'm trying to help someone to see today is that beyond everything else you may have to deal with or be going through is if you want to see better to be better, we can never lose sight of the glory of the Lord. God is good. Can I say this again? God is good. I'm going to say it one more time. God is good all the time and all the time God is good. No matter how dark things may get in your life, let God be your light. Not just at the end the tunnel, but all the way through. That's how good God is. Can I ask you a question? Here it comes. Are you ready for it? What's your problem? It doesn't matter what you might be going through, dealing with, or feeling. God has got you, and you've got to allow him to be your light in any dark situation. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but what I do know is this is that if you can keep your heart's eyes focused on the Father, everything is going to be all right. Woo, I wish I had an organist right now. Everything is going to be all right. I need to say this to some father or some father figure, some, some mother, some mom, some woman, some child. I need to say this to everybody. But what I do, and listen, I need to say this. God sees you. Come on, somebody. And I need to ask, are you seeing him and his glory? He sees you. He hears you. And if you can just refocus in on him, everything, somebody say everything, <laughs> everything is going to be all right. You want to see better to be better? Well, listen, the first thing you and I have got to refocus in on is we've got to see God's glory. Come on, somebody. No matter what. That's the first point. We've got to see God's glory. But listen, also, if you want to see better to be better, not only do we need to see God's glory, but we also need to see our sin. Hold on. Don't don't click off yet. I know, I know you might not want to deal with this, but we need to, okay? If we're going to see better to be better, as God wants us to, come on somebody, the first thing we're going to have to do according to the text is we're going to have to be able to see God's glory. God is shining all the time. God sees us and he wants us to see him through every situation we're going through. As a matter of fact, can I just add this on for free? God wants to see our situations through him and not just through ourselves. We got to see God's glory, but also we also got to see our own sin. Mm. It's right there in verse 5. Isaiah helps us to see this. He says this. He's look. He says, woe to me. 
I cried. I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips. I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Listen to this. In order to truly see ourselves as God sees us, you've got to not be too hard on yourself, but you do need to be honest with yourself in comparison to God. Never forget that there are some things in our life, loves, and labors that need to be cleaned up. Come on, somebody. Which means we need to be able to acknowledge and confess our sins to God. We can't walk around acting like we, we do no wrong. What, 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 what God wants us to see is that we are sinners saved by his grace. And when we approach the Lord, we need to be willing to admit that. Isaiah basically says, <clears throat> I've messed up and I've been hanging with messed up people, but I see the miracle worker who can make it all right. All I need to do is see where I went wrong, confess it, and allow him to make it and make me right again. You see, the truth is we won't be able to stop what we don't acknowledge. You can't get over it or through it if you're not willing to face it. Yes, it happened. Yes, that's how you decided to handle it. No, that's not what God directed you to do. But he loves you, and he loves us so much that if we acknowledge and confess our sins, he will forgive us and not only forgives us, but reinstates us. But not only reinstates us, in many cases elevates us, just uh, elevates us, just showing us how much he loves us in the first place. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, If my people, come on, who are called by my name, that's us, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. You got to see him. Come on, somebody. And turn from their wicked ways. That's confession. Then, then, somebody say, then, I will hear from the Lord and I will forgive your sin. I will hear from heaven uh, uh, and, and I will forgive your sin and I will heal their lands. In other words, God is saying, if you get it right, uh, he's going to get you right. Woo. <laughs> yeah, right there. The only way you and I are ever going to turn, uh, are going to turn uh, from from our wicked ways, and as if we can see our sins for what they are, and allow God to do His things. You and I have got to see His glory, but we've also got to be able to see our sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm reminded. Uh, I remember uh, this one time when our our son Chancellor. Uh, was much younger. He's 14 now and looking me uh, eye to eye. Yeah, yeah. He's 14, looking me eye to eye. But but when he was probably around nine or 10, I, I remember him getting in some trouble for something which actually rarely ever happened. Uh, Chance is a good 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 guy, good kid. Uh, and, and and listen, I, I remember this one time though. Uh, I asked him about what had happened, and he and he wouldn't say anything. We were riding in the car on the way back home from school, and and I asked him about what had happened, and he and he wasn't saying anything. I asked him why he wasn't answering me and he said he felt like he did answer this he said he felt that if he said something about what he had done it would get him in more trouble stay with me I'm going somewhere but what I share with him is something that my own father once shared with me if you've done something wrong I told him as your father I'd rather hear it from you so we can deal with it instead of having to hear it from someone else and that would make it worse I told Chance that even when you're done when even when you've done something wrong and we all have have, I'm still here. I'm still here to help you because I'm your father. They may, there may be consequences, but let me tell you this: the consequences will be worse if you don't acknowledge what you've done. Because my father used to tell me that if you can admit when you've done wrong, that will hopefully help you get it right next time. Come on, somebody. But if you're not willing to admit it, but you did it, then chances are you may be doomed to repeat it. Let me tell you that part again. If, you, if you're not willing to admit it, but you did it, then chances are you may be doomed to re repeat it. And I got to say, is there anybody here and you want to see better, to be better? Then once, when one of the things you and I have to be willing to do is is to see our own sins. And when we see where we've gone wrong, when we see how we have sinned, we need to be willing to confess it to the Lord so he can do some of something about it. Yes, if you want to see better to be better, I know I do. Listen, if you want to see better to be better, the first thing we, this text is tended to teach us is we've got to see God's glory. Yeah, then we've got to see 
our sin. But understand, God doesn't leave us there in our sins because the next thing we need to see better to be better is we've got to see God's cleansing. Let me go back over those again in case you're taking notes and you might have missed it. If you want to see better to be better, that's the title of this message today. Listen, if you want to see better to be better, shift your perspective to God's perspective, then the first thing we've got to be able to do is we've got to see God's glory. The second thing we need to be able to do is we've got to see our sins. But the second, the third thing we need to do is we need to see God's cleansing because when we confess our sins, God doesn't leave us right there. Look at verse six and seven of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. It says this, then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his mouth. Uh, in his hand, excuse me, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sins are atoned for. See, verse six shows us that when Isaiah acknowledges his, his, his unworthiness and his sinful nature, God doesn't just leave him there to soak in his guilt. The seraphim took a hot cold and touches his lips, which cleanses him of his sin and makes him worthy of the tasks and blessings ahead. Understand that God will still have, God still had a purpose and a plan for your life, but what he wants to do is make us worthy to do his work. Come on, somebody. God still wants to use us in spite of us. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, so understand, he still has a purpose and a plan. And in order to do that, he has to cleanse us through forgiveness, mercy, and get grace. Uh, I like how Reverend Dr. Marcus Cosby puts it. He said, no matter what you have, no matter what you have done or been through, if you can face it, God can fix it. That's grace. If you can confess it, God can conquer it. If you can say it, God can sweep it away. If you can converse with him about it, he can clean it up. First John 1 and nine says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful. He being God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Is there anybody here who was willing to confess that I may not be perfect, but he's piecing me together nicely. I may not be all right, but I'm surely not all wrong. God is working on me and cleaning me up. If he, and if he can do it for me, then he can do it for you too. We We've got to see better to be better. And one of the things we've got to see is see God's cleansing. You know, uh, uh, as part of our daily routine, uh, when, when either me or my wife uh, pick uh, Chase, our four-year-old up from daycare, uh, we bring with us a snack so he can have a snack on the way home from daycare. We give him a snack on the ride home. His snacks vary from day to day, but one of his favorite snacks is nacho cheese Doritos, or what he calls red chips. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, now, Chase fully enjoys his snacks on the way home, as you can imagine. When he finishes his snack, he usually says, I'm done. And, and, and I'll hand him a wipe. I'm driving, but I can re still reach, reach and hand him a wet wipe to clean his hands and his mouth with. However, because he's only four years old, there's only so much cleaning. Come on, somebody. He is able to do with the wet wipe. He'll do his best. You know, he'll, he'll kind of wipe his hands with it and graze past his mouth. Uh, so it never fails that when we get home, though, uh, even though he has wiped his hands and wiped his mouth, there's still some orange residue on his fingers from the red chips. <clears throat> So as soon as we get out of the car, come on, stay with me. As soon as we get out, of the, get out of the car and head into the house, the first thing we do is go to the sink. So I, as his father, I'm going somewhere, can thoroughly wash his hands because I'm his father and I can properly wash his hands for him so that there's no residue or evidence that he, that he had been dealing with a mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, let me see if I can't break that down because you might have missed it. See, Chase is eating chips huh? and Chase is four years old. And even though I give him a, a wet nap to, to wipe his hands, he can only clean his hands so much. And so there's some still some 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 dust, some some residue of what he's been messing with. Come on, somebody still on his hands. So when we go in the house, me as his father, whoa, I'm going somewhere. Me as his father will get him and I'll take him to the sink and I'll properly wash his hands so much so that there's no residue do left or no mess left of what he's been through or what he's been dealing with. Come here a minute. That's exactly what our Heavenly Father wants to do 
for you and I. He wants to clean us up from our mess of sin so much so that there isn't even a trace of what we've trampled through. Is there anybody here and you don't look like what you've been through because you've been willing to confess your sins unto the Lord? Well, that's because God our Father has cleaned you up uh, like only he can. If you want to see better, come on somebody, you got to, if you want to, if you want to see better to be better, we've got to see God's cleansing of our sins. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm almost through. I got one more point, but here it is. If you want to see better, if you want your life perspectives to be better so your life can be better, if you want to tune in, refocus, come on somebody, I see you Facebook, I see you YouTube, I see you freeconferencecall.com, I see you out there. Listen, if you want to see better to be better, well, the first thing this text is tailored to teach us is we've got to see God's glory no matter what. God is still God no matter what you and I are dealing with. We got to see God's glory, but then we also have got to see our sins. But once we see and confess our sins, then we've got to see God's cleansing. And finally, if we're going to see better to be better, we've got to see our responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, we got to see God's glory. Then we put it back on us, we got to see our sin. Then we put it back towards God, we got to see God's cleansing, which will allow us or should allow us to see our responsibility. We're trying to see better to be better. Come on, somebody. It's right there in verse 8. It says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. <laughs> send me. Yeah, yeah. If we're going to see better to be better, I'm going to finish this thing up and we're going to get out of here. If we're going to see better to be better, one of the major things we have to see is that we have a responsibility in all that we do to serve the Lord. Isaiah had recognized that he was unworthy of being used or blessed by God, but because he acknowledged his uncleanliness, the seraphim cleaned him up. And then God spoke directly to him and asked, who shall we send? And without hesitation, because of God's actions of forgiveness, Isaiah immediately responded with, here I am, send me. And that's exactly what God is looking for from you and I. When we recognize how he has graced us, he is looking for our immediate response of, send me. I shared with you earlier that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And many of us try to disqualify ourselves because of what we have been through through what we are dealing with or how we are we have sinned but if we allow God to clean us up when God asks who shall I sin we need to immediately answer and say watch this Lord send me now notice this <clears throat> When God asked, who shall I send in the text? No seraphim, there were no cherubs, no angels responded. Why? Because God has ordained that, is, that it is the cleansed, forgiven child of God who is to take the message of salvation to the world. The one who, is, who has experienced forgiveness and cleansing is to take the message of cleansing and forgiveness to others. So you know, all those times when you ask yourself for God, why me, Lord? Why do I have have to be the one to show others grace? Why me, Lord? Why would you choose me to go through what I've been through? Well, the answer is because we have a responsibility to serve God and share his message of forgiveness and healing through others. You see, God has allowed you to go through some things so he can use those things to bless somebody else. God has allowed people to do you wrong so you can do them right and show them how it's done. God has allowed you to hurt yet be healed so you can show somebody else that healing is available. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, therefore go, come on somebody, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything. Somebody say everything. Everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is your assignment. Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes, us. This is our assignment. The one who has been through so much. God is looking for someone just like you and me 
to carry out his assignment. You may not have been called to preach in the pulpit, but your life is a sermon that someone else needs to hear. Can't you see it? Is there anybody here? And you want to accept the responsibility of being picked by the Lord. Pick me, Lord. Choose me, Lord. I am ready because you have prepared a plan for my life. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're getting ready to get out of here, but let me tell you this before we go. Uh, the younger generation, the younger generation, mostly on social media, have a term that they use called uh, a pick me. Now, the Urban Dictionary, if you look it up, Google it if you if you don't know, uh, the Urban Dictionary says that a pick me, uh, according to the world, is a negative term that means a person who will do anything to be accepted by other people, generally the opposite, opposite sex. In other words, uh, they'll agree to whatever the opposite is saying, so that group will accept them and pick them or choose them to be with them. But in a spiritual sense, watch this. I told you in the worldly sense, in social media, that's a negative thing. But in a spiritual sense, in God's eyes, he's looking for a pick me. Come on, somebody. God is looking for someone who desires to see better, to be better. God is looking for someone who he can clean up in such a way that who that who they become, who they become to speaks to what, what he can do. Can you see it? I don't know about you. But I want God uh, to pick me. I'm not trying to impress anybody else in this world, uh, but my wife, uh, my family, and the Lord. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I want God uh, to pick me. I need somebody under the sound of my voice who is not ashamed to say they see the responsibility of being called by God to go ahead uh, and give God some praise right now. If there's anybody who's listening to me right now and you want God, to pick you, huh? go on and raise your hands and say, I'm here, Lord. Choose me. I'm here, Lord. Send me. I didn't think I was worthy, but God, there it is. Come on, let's get out of here. I didn't think I was worthy. I thought I was down and out. I thought I had messed up, but anything that I messed up, when I took it to God, huh? he fixed it up. And as a matter of fact, <clears throat> the things that I messed up, he not only fixed Fixed up, he made it better. Can he do that for me? Yes, and he can do that for you. We've all made mistakes. Uh, we've all done some wrong. We've all done some dirt. But watch this. Uh, we serve a God who will clean us up. And if you and I would just refocus ourselves so we could see better to be better, come on, somebody, we can be and do exactly what God has called us to do. We got to get out of here. But watch to this. Each of us needs to shift what we see by shifting how we see. The only way you and I will ever be able to see ourselves as the blessing God created is st and is still working on is to see ourselves through his eyes. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? I see it. I see a blessing looking back at me. There's a blessing on the other side of this screen. There's a blessing in your living room. There's a blessing in your in your bedroom. There's a blessing in your house. And who am I talking about? I'm talking about you. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise right now and tell him, I want to see your glory, God. I want to see my sins, God. I want to see, come on, somebody, the cleansing of God. And I want to see my, my responsibilities because if I see better, I can be better. And I believe it. Yes, give him some praise. Yes, give him some glory. Do you see it? Hey, fathers, I see you out there. Keep on working hard, man. Keep on doing what you do. It doesn't matter what others might say. Keep on doing it uh, in the name of the Lord. And ladies, uh, I haven't left you out. Uh, keep being your best self. I know it's been hard. I know you've had some struggles. I know you've gone through some things. But God, there it is. But God, anytime you insert God in the middle of your mess, he will take it, uh, clean it up, uh, and make it look like a miracle. Because my God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask and or think. That means there is nothing, woo, nothing that our God can't 
do and he will do whatever he needs to do for you and with you according to your his will in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Somebody give him some praise. Somebody give him some glory. Somebody give it all to the one who gave it all for you and I. You can see better to be better. God's got a blessing with your name on it. And, and, and it's not fair for you to disqualify yourself, my friend. Because when we look at the situation through God's eyes, God's eyes, what we see is mercy, grace, and love. And in spite of what you've done, in spite of what you've been through, if you're willing to confess your sins, turn it all over to God. I dare you. I double dog dare you to watch him make everything all right. I know you've been through it. I know you've been dealing with it. But turn it over to God. Get, you know what? It's time for somebody starting today to go in for their spiritual eye exam. Turn it over to God. Allow him to correct your vision, shift your perspective, and refocus everything that needs to be set right. Listen, I want to close this, this service in a word of prayer. But I want to reach out right now to those who may have never accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. I want to let you know as I pray out loud, I want you to pray silently. I want you to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And he'll do it. All you got to say is, listen, when I'm praying out loud, you pray silently. Listen, or out loud if you want to. Listen, all you got to do is say, Lord, <clears throat> please come into my heart. I believe that you died, were buried, and rose again for my sins. I believe, and I confess with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that you are everything I need to go to heaven and be with God forevermore. That's all you got to say. It's that simple. All you have to do is say yes, and Jesus Christ will do the rest. And for the rest of us who have already accepted Christ, I want you to pray. As I'm praying out loud, listen, I want you to pray that God would refocus your perspective to be more like his that we might see his glory through everything, that we might see our sins and ask for forgiveness, that we might see that he will forgive us and cleanse us, and that we might see our responsibility to go tell it to the world so they too can be saved. Come on, let's pray. Our Father, our God, how we again thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good and gracious to us. We pray, oh God, for those who've never accepted Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. We pray, oh God, that today can be the first day of the rest of their lives, that they will receive him and accept him as he accepts us. And so, Father, we pray for each and every individual under the sound of my voice. I pray that you would refocus us, redirect us, shift our perspective to be more like yours. God, we want to see better so we can be better, so we can be more blessed as you created us to be in the first place. No matter what we go through, we understand that, that hard times will come. We understand that troubles will come. We understand that, that, the, that the enemy, the devil, will throw things at us. But God, when we insert a but God into our situation, everything will shift and be turned around in Jesus' name. And so God, I pray that you would flow through these airwaves to the power of the Holy Spirit and touch each and every individual under the sound of my voice. So much so that today they know for sure that they had an encounter with you. God, we need you. God, we love you. We adore you. And we thank you in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, my friends. I want you to have, uh, you know, and I'm saying this on behalf of my beautiful wife and family uh, and our entire church family. We want you to have a blessed and amazing day and rest of the week on purpose. <laughs> Get refocused. See better to be better. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And praise God. Happy Father's Day. Go be a blessing. Go be blessed 
and be a blessing in Jesus' name. Take care. God bless you. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's worship him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to see better so I can be better. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise. Let's worship on out of here. Come in. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed. Go in peace and be a blessing. Yes, yes. The name of this song is The Blessing. We're being blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And your family and your children and their children will be blessed. We can see better to be better. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Be blessed, my friends. Take care. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm.